Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and magnify the name of the Lord today? In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. If you believe God has had you at all since yesterday till now, and whatever specific issues you believe God has answered you, lift up those two hands and give God thanks specifically for those issues. Give God thanks specifically for those issues. I thank you, Jesus, because you have heard me. You have heard me on this issue. You have heard me on that issue. I magnify you, Jesus, because you have heard me. Give him thanks specifically. Do it the same way you did in praying. I thank you, Jesus. And Jesus precious name we have prayed father we are gathered again tonight at the feet of your son Jesus waiting to be touched Jesus speak to everyone specifically tonight open up a new chapter to everyone tonight in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus precious name Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. God's avowed agenda for the year is to bring all of us in the winner's family into the realms of heaven on earth. And no devil will stop that in your life. We are not just coming on there for a taste. He's bringing us there to dwell there. So beginning from this year, you are dwelling in the world of heaven to come. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. We started looking yesterday at prayer as a gateway to an open heaven. And Jesus prayed in Luke chapter 9. And the glory of God came down. Heaven came down on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the word came from heaven. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. In Luke chapter 3, in whom I'm well pleased. In Luke chapter 9, verse 35, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Never has changed. It was not a casual prayer he prayed. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his garments were white and glistering. As he prayed, that's not casual prayer. That's not wandering prayer. That's focused and pressure exerting prayer. And as he prayed, you're going to have unusual experience this month. As you pray the kind of prayer that Jesus prayed. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his garment, his raiment was white and glistering. And verse 30. And the Bible says, and behold, there talked with him two men which were Moses and Elijah. He brought down the spirit of just men made perfect. And prayers. However, there are basic prayer protocols to be observed. To pray the kind of prayer that is transforming, transfiguring, and level changing. 
Now, there is, there, we have some biblical prayer protocols we must observe. If I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Praise God. He said, but now God has heard me. Verse 19. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Now, the man speaking here is a very strange man who at a point committed adultery and murder. You remember the story of David with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel chapter 11? He organized the killing or the death of Uriah. He took Uriah's wife to be a wife. Yet, God forgave him. Now, listen to this. There are no sins that God cannot forgive. But we require our repentance to forgive. There are no sins that God cannot forgive. But he cannot forgive without our repentance. In Psalm 51, we saw David in open repentance before the Lord. And in Psalm 66, we saw his testimony of forgiveness. Because sin has been cleared off his account. Now he had access in prayers. There are no sins that God cannot forget, forgive, but it will require our genuine confession and repentance to forgive. In Proverbs 28 and verse 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. If we say we have not sinned when we have sinned, John 1 John 1 8, then we deceive ourselves, and there is no truth in us. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we must never assume forgiveness. Forgiveness must be carefully sought for. Carefully sought for. We must never assume forgiveness or that assumption may lead to unending frustration. Forgiveness must be carefully sought for. Carefully sought for. There was this murderer by name Ahab whose wife made to do wickedness beyond whatever happened in Israel. His wife, Jezebel, was a terrorist. And God came down and landed judgment on him. First Kings 21 verse 27. And this man, it came to pass when he had heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the teacher by saying, Seest thou how he have humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring this evil in his days. God turned the table after a wicked king repented. Everything that anyone genuinely repents of on this mountain is free from it for life. Forever, forever, forever. God has concluded the judgment of Nineveh and sent Jonah to go and announce, 40 days you are dead. 
And when the word came to the king, he said, Ah, ah, let's seek the face of God for forgiveness. He arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Verse 6. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king. And his noble saying, let neither man nor beast, heart nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Say, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? And turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. And God wrote off their wickedness. Forgiveness must never be assumed. It must be carefully sought for. It must be carefully sought for or our prayer line will remain corrupted and not connecting and not reaching out to God. Prayer protocol demands that we clean up for our prayers to be answered. For God's hand is not sure that he cannot save, his ears are not heavy that he cannot hear, but our iniquity are separated between us and God, so that he will not hear us. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. We must clean up to be heard. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the word says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive them. They are saying, and I will heal their land. I will forgive them and I will heal them. I will forgive them and I will heal them. I will hear. I will forgive. I will heal. This is so vital. So everything that displeases God in and around your life must be consciously repented of and forgiveness secured so that you can assess your next level. These two instances show the place of fasting. They did not only repent, they repented fasting. You see, please understand this. One very great prayer protocol is the place of exertion of pressure. Come and say exertion of pressure. You see, he said in Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. He said, Who has had such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall the nation be brought forth at once? Who has sown at Zion, travail? Ah, he brought forth children. So there's a place of traveling in prayer to deliver. That's why I said, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. The kind of prayer people pray today may never reach heaven. Certain required pressures are demanded to deliver. Now listen to this. Here is a man called Bartimaeus. And he had heard that Jesus opened the eyes of some other fellows. And he said, well, what's happening? Why are the noise all around? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Jesus! You can imagine, say, Jesus of Nazareth, I'm here. Oh. Don't forget, oh. I'm in this place. Oh. I've been here now for about 30 years. Oh. Jesus of Nazareth, come on. He cried out to secure his attention. You see, you can sit by the roadside forever. Jesus is passing by every day. And now you are, thank you, Jesus. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes now. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. 
They said, shut up. They cried yet louder. Jesus! He was exerting the required pressure to break forth into heaven. Somebody hear what I'm talking about? No woman delivers a child without going through the labor room. There are certain precious things you can never deliver the way you pray. Father, I just thank you. I thank you. What, what was I saying, really? Look at the way Elijah prayed. The Bible said he put his head between his two knees. Have you tried that before? He put his head between his two knees. Oh, God! Open the heavens. Open the heavens. Oh, God! Open the heavens. My servant, go check up. He said nothing. He said, go seven times. When you get something, touch me. Oh, God. Open the heavens. He was sweating all out. Oh, God. Open the heavens. Please understand that Jonah went into fasting. I mean, what do they call it? Ninibi. Went to fasting to seek Kill God's forgiveness and deliverance. Air went into fasting. So it's not just so bad and glean, just brooding over things as if they do not exist. It's time to exert the required pressures to destroy all the issues, all the unwanted issues around your life. So important. He prayed earnestly that it should not rain. He did not rain for three and a half years. He prayed again, earnestly, and heavens gave rain. Jeremiah chapter 3, I mean James chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. He prayed again, and the heaven, 5 please, James 5, 15 and 16, and heavens gave rain. He prayed again, high pressured prayers, Traveling prayers. The kind of prayers that sleeping or dozing can come near your life. He prayed again and the heavens gave rain. Remember, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force. We have to engage some level of violence in prayer to deliver certain treasures that we desire. The kingdom of God is preached and every man presses, presses. People don't like to press, they just want to win the prize. Everyone presses, presses, presses into it. Luke 16 verse 16. It's time to receive grace. To engage the required pressures to open your heaven. The required pressures to open your heaven. In Psalm 56 and verse 6, when I cry, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. When I cry, not until I cry, when I cry, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know because God is for me. Because God is for me. When I cry, that's verse 9, sorry. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Not when I speak, when I cry. You should know the difference between crying and speaking. When I cry, oh God, enough is enough. Break it this year. Enough is enough. This growth must go. Body, ten, tunnels. You look at it, you see there. I say, no, you must go. Today. It's not tomorrow you are going today. You see, you exert the required pressure to get the wicked off your back. Can I hear your amen?
So take care of these two protocols so you don't waste the days ahead. Amen. Never assume forgiveness. Consciously and carefully seek for it. Never engage in this psychedelic, charismatic, easygoing, pressure-free prayer. You may not deliver all that you desire. Even Jesus had to press into divine mandate for him. In Luke 22, verse 44, very interesting scripture. The Bible said, I'm been in agony. He prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You think that's casual prayer? Therefore, take advantage of this season and get the devil off your back, off the back of your children, off the back of your health, off the back of your business, off the back of your career, and break forth into that realm of heaven on earth. This is so important. This is so important. You remember the prayer of Jacob? He lost something in his tie and he began to leap from that day forward it was in prayers let me go and when he saw that he prevailed not he touched the hollow of his thigh and the whole of jacob's thigh was out of joy as he wrestled with him but what happened he was translated from a person to a nation your change of level will require the exertion of some level of pressure in prayers Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My prayer is that no one will go through this season casually. Ah, that no one will go through this season casually. My prayer is that no one goes through this season casually. I noted some things here as I was praying according to the words of prophets that came to us. My father, endue me with the power of the world to come so I can live one, a same free life, a sickness free life, a cost free life, an oppression free life, but there's no Satan in heaven. A death overcoming life, but there shall be no more death there. An angelic lifestyle full of strength, vigor, and versatility, and deal with supernatural intelligence. Commanding angelic order of exploits out of this world kind of results. A sorrow free life. A crisis free life. For he's the prince of peace and that's where he dwells. A super abundance life. A love free life. A concern free life where every day is Christmas. And a wonder without end life. Manifesting the reality of heaven on earth. I'd like you to put yourself on the line. You can't afford to keep watching these things pass. Day number two is going. He said, I see quickening. I'm sure somebody's quickening right now. He said, On the second day, it will revive us. There is a revival going on now. So, no quiet prayer on the bed. Gosh, you don't pass exam reading on the bed. No. No. No silent prayer the kind we had in our churches in those days where it's just have a nap, everybody. Silent prayer. Apart from the pastor, everybody is snoring. Shall we have silent prayer? Mm. Mm. Then they have to ring a bell to wake you up. That enough, siesta is over. We have all the opportunity around Canaan land to pray our life out. And grown your way into dimensions of growth and change of levels. Please understand 
There's a place for crying to get God's attention. Paul said, I press towards the mark for the price of the high of God in Christ Jesus. Receive that grace to begin to pray prayers with groanings which cannot be uttered. In taking delivery of the things that pertain to you. And watch out. Your change of level is sure. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Lift up your two hands. And now receive grace from heaven. To make the most of this season. In prayers. Ask God specifically if there's anything that you know offends God in your life. Jesus, forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood. Write off my iniquities and my trespasses. From the depth of your heart, this season is ordained for your change of levels. Don't let it slip of you. God is eager to turn your stories around. Cry out for your rescue. for your rescue. I refuse to just be a participant. I must be a full partaker of the blessedness of this season. I must be a full partaker of the blessedness of this season. Give God thanks for hearing you. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Please get seated for a moment. Before we serve the communion tonight, both here and in all of our viewing centers, you are there and you are not sure of your salvation. You are not sure of your new birth. All things have remained like that. And you desire the salvation of your soul tonight. For Jesus said, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to him. You want your sins forgiven. You want your name in the book of life. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. Everyone that wants to say yes to Jesus tonight, just stand. Stand to your feet. God bless you out there. God bless you. God bless you. You want to say yes to Jesus tonight, just stand to your feet. There are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Christ. If you are there, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. You want to stay a comeback. Maybe you were once saved, but certain things happened and then there was a disconnect. You want to return back to God tonight, please stand to your feet also. And I pray with you at the same time. God bless you. Everyone that wants to return back to Jesus, please stand to your feet. And God bless you. Stand to your feet. Both here and all the viewing centers. All of us who are standing here, wherever you are, please make your way straight to the front right now so we can pray. Hallelujah. Anybody else can see, join us. Wherever you are, just join us right now. Join us right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, good news. Amen. Um, we have um, winners intercessory prayer guidelines for 2015 to be given out tonight to every one of us and then also to have a number of us to put a summary of your prayer points we have this petition card where you can have your summary lines here and then um, that will help you you're going to office coming back and everything 
to connect in prayers. Ushers, would you make that available right away? Please. I think we have them here. Okay, so ushers, make them available right away. In all of our centers in Lagos and Ottawa, you have them already with you. So please make available to the people right now. All the ones who have given their life to Christ and dedicated their lives, please move towards the altar in your various centers where you are, and then you'll be prayed for. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just take yours, and then others will take theirs when they come. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. All of us in front, please bow your heads for prayers in a moment. Bow your heads for prayers first. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God as I lead you in prayers. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm restored. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let me pray over you right now with your hands up. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. And I cover every one of you right now with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered until the day of his appearing. From today, begin to enjoy the reality of new birth. And I pray that this fasting and prayer season will bring about the turnaround you have been looking for in all areas of your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please open your eyes and walk with these officials. Submit your cards with them and then join us with the communion. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise to our feet? Amen. Glory to God. I'd like you to believe God to receive the prayer energy of Christ from this, prayer, from this communion table. The prayer energy of Christ. That after you have prayed, you will know, not just that you have prayed, but that God has heard. Elijah knew how to pray the prayer that must be answered. Glory to God. And of all born of men, there is none as great as John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. So you have the Elijah's potential inside you. As we partake of this communion, the grace to pray the prayer that must be answered, the prayer to pray the kind of prayer and the pressures that it may demand, you receive it right now. Amen. Lift up your two hands and ask God for it. Lord, I desire the transmission of the Jesus order of prayer energy into my life. Even to pray forgiveness, you must exert certain pressures to have your sins forgiven, to be cleansed from all unrighteousness, Ahab fasted. The people of Nineveh fasted. Jesus release into my life tonight the Jesus order of prayer energy. The grace to pray the prayer that must be answered. I receive it tonight. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As you partake of this communion, believe God to purge your conscience from every evil work. Hebrews 9 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from evil works to serve the living God? The capacity to sin will be destroyed tonight. From now, you'll be thinking right, yeah. speaking right, yeah. and doing right yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, receive that in one word of prayers. 
I receive the purging of my conscience by the blood of the Lamb from this table tonight to begin to think right only, speak right only, and do right only at all times. Let it be, Lord. Let the stewards please take their positions. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Purge my conscience from every evil works tonight to serve the living God. Purge my conscience from every evil work tonight to serve the living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. This table is blessed as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And if you partake of it, everything you desire is delivered. Amen. If there be any case of ill health, sickness or disease, as you partake of this table, it is rooted out of your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Your strength is declared renewed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As we go on in the days of this fasting, your strength is growing up. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Everyone's conscience is purged by the blood tonight from every evil work. Amen. Capacity to do evil is destroyed. Amen. Capacity to think evil is destroyed. Amen. Capacity to speak evil is destroyed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now receive the prayer energy of Christ Amen. into your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please get seated while the stewards serve the table. Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayer. The God I serve answers prayer. Only Jesus answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh yes, my God answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayer. The God I serve, the God I serve.
lift up your two hands and give God thanks for the encounter of tonight. God, it's imparted upon your prayer life. And you are going now to generate more results. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. After two days, we lay revivals. And in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his side. Tomorrow there is a rising for you. It's the third day of this fast. Can I take in one said that I had never asked anything from God that lasted more than three days to get answers to. Please watch out for your day of rising tomorrow. And set the stage for it from tonight by putting to work the things we've had tonight. Clearing all debris on your prayer line and then exerting required pressures to secure heaven's attention. Can I hear your amen? amen? He said, Then shall we know if ye follow on to know the Lord. So if nothing happens after three days, then we know you didn't do well. Glory to God. Then shall we know. This is heaven's agenda. After two days, it will revive us. How many have been revived? On the third day, it will raise us up. Come on, say, you are rising. Say, I'm rising. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is your rising day. He said, destroy this temple. After three days, I will build it. Therefore, watch out. Tomorrow is a day of harvest of answers to prayers. Yeah. Your testimonies must learn tomorrow. Yeah. Your visitation must be established tomorrow. Yeah. Your resurrection must be sealed tomorrow. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks because having revived you, he has vowed to raise you up. Celebrate God. Magnify him. Lift your voice on high. Give him praise and glory. Come on, are you giving God praise? Lift up your voices and bless the name of the Lord who has visited us so wonderfully tonight. And indeed, our revival is on. God is faithful. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Let him hear your voice of thanksgiving. Let him hear your voice of praise. Let him hear your voice of adoration. If you're set for the rising of the third day, give God praise. Lord, we glorify you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and just before we share in god's goodness if you do not have copies yet of the expectation cards and the intercessory prayer guidelines you will just signify at the end of the service the ushers will place copies in your hands take your neighbor's hands on both sides if you can and let's lift up those hands to heaven and with a loud voice shall we together share in god's goodness one to go surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Heaven on earth and wonders without end. That's my new realm and your new realm. For how long? Help me give it to your neighbor as you go. God bless you. See you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.